Hello, and welcome to this episode of the Dev Quickie. Our topic is the particle system. Let's get right to it. We are going to be using this Global's helper class. It allows easier access to the content, sprite batch, and elapsed game time. Additionally, it provides a method to generate a random float number. The input manager gives us an easy global access to the mouse state. We can ask if the user just clicked or what's the current mouse position. And the game manager class that will bind everything else together. We will use this simple particle texture. Okay, let's start coding. First, we need to define a particle. We will split the definition into two classes. The particle data will contain all the parameters. The texture, the lifespan, or how long is the particle visible? Starting and ending color, because the particle might change color during its lifespan. And the same for the opacity. The second class is the particle itself. It stores the particle data, the current position, how much lifespan is left. Lifespan amount is the percentage of the lifespan elapsed, the current color and opacity. And a bool flag signaling the end of the lifespan. A simple constructor initializing the fields. In the update method, we reduce the lifespan and check if the particle is still alive. Then we calculate the lifespan amount. The clamp makes sure the result is in the interval from zero to one. Next, we get the current values for color and opacity. We use the linear interpolation between the start and end values based on the lifespan amount. And lastly, the draw method. Note that the color is multiplied by the opacity. This will make the particle transparent. Let's do a fairly simple particle manager. It will hold a list of all particles. A method to add a new particle. An update that will handle the list and remove everything that expired, and a similar draw method. It's time to prepare for the first test. In the game manager's update method, we check for a click and add a new particle at cursor's position. Don't forget to call the particle manager's draw and update. Let's give it a go. There's a new particle with every click that lasts two seconds, changes color from yellow to red, and slowly fades away. Exactly what we wanted. Perfect. We can build up upon that and add some more features, like changing the size or moving the particle. We will need a speed and an angle in the data definition. In the particle itself, let's add scale to change the size as needed, origin for the draw calls, and a direction of the movement. We will set the origin to the middle of the texture. If the particle has any speed, we will count the direction vector. First, we need to convert the angle from degrees to radians. Then use the sinus and cosinus functions to get the right values. Note the negative sign for the y-axis. Next, let's calculate the current scale value in the update method. It will be the current desired size divided by the actual texture's size. And finally, change the position using the traditional formula: direction multiplied by speed and time. Put those values into the draw method, and we are ready for another test run. As we can see, the particles are shrinking down while moving upwards. That's the zero degree direction. Everything seems great. Next task is to have something that will generate those particles. We will call it a particle emitter. Let's start again by defining its data. First, we need the data about the particles it should be firing, then the angle of the particle's movement. But we would like to randomly generate some of the particle's properties so that they are all a little different. We will use angle variance, lifespan, and speed boundaries for that. The interval value says how often will the emitter generate new particles, and the count means how many with each firing. That's all the data we need. We create a very simple interface for the emitter with one property. That gets the starting position of a particle. Any class implementing this interface can be a source for a particle emitter. Let's make an example. Mouse emitter class 
that implements the interface simply by returning the current mouse position. OK, now the particle emitter itself. Of course we start with the particle emitter data. A time counter for the interval. And something that implements our interface to get the position. The constructor is straightforward. The emit method will randomize and generate one particle. Based on the data provided, we just get random values for the lifespan, speed and angle. Create a new particle and hand it to the manager. The update method handles the time interval. When the interval elapses, it gets reset and the emitter is triggered. It asks for a position and generates new particles there. Just a quick update to the particle manager. A list of particle emitters and a method to add them. Plus an update method that iterates through the list. To test everything out we move to the game manager. Create an instance of the mouse emitter. Prepare some example particle emitter data. Create the particle emitter and hand it to the manager. We get rid of the older test code and we are ready. We set a very small interval, that means it is continually firing. An angle variance of 180 degrees is basically any angle. This creates a nice fire-like effect, that follows the cursor. Let's make another example. We create a static emitter, one that stays at one place. Back to the game manager, create an instance of it. Prepare another set of test data. Create the particle emitter and let's take a look. As expected, this one stays at a fixed spot, good. Notice we left the angle variance at the default value of 45. OK, let's make one more where we try different settings. It will be firing slowly, but a lot of particles at once. At any angle. The lifespan will always be 2 seconds. And the speed will always be 100. The color will change from green to yellow. And the particle will grow from 8 to 32 pixels. Let's give it a go. That is a very different effect than the previous one, quickly and easily done by modifying a few settings. We made a fine foundation of a particle system. Congratulations! Thanks for watching, and see you next time.